What's up, YouTube? Daniel Carter at Afro Herp Keeper here. Today, I'm teaming up with a friend and colleague named Michael Schiponi, uh, who recently started his own YouTube channel called Expedition Paleo. Michael's been featured in a few of my videos before. He's come with me to tabling events, helping the public learn about reptiles, amphibians, and invertebrates. And he's really an expert on all things paleontological. In this instance, Michael wants me to come with him to search for a really cool example of something called trace fossils. Trace fossils are the imprints left behind by prehistoric animals, such as shells or footprints, imprints of things that were left in the mud or sand millions and millions of years ago. Today we're taking all of you along with us to the South San Gabriel River in search of not only living reptiles and amphibians, but also prehistoric animals, dinosaurs such as Sauroposeidon and Acrocanthosaurus. We're going to be looking for dinosaur tracks along with frogs, toads, snakes, and any other living creatures we come across. So without any further ado, it's time to hit the road and we will see you at the South San Gabriel River. at the South San Gabriel. This is Michael Traponi. Say hi. We are just about to head down there. Hopefully we find some good tracks. Hopefully a few herps. I'm thinking water snakes, but I have no clue what we're gonna find down there. It's pretty cloudy, pretty overcast today, so hoping for some good finds. We just found a gorgeous little, uh, I'm not sure what this is, it feeds into the main river. But there is a massive waterfall right here. There are some uh, stalactites over here at the mouth of the waterfall. Really? Yeah, little ones. Beautiful. This just looks like a cave. It does. All right, we have reports of first herp of the day, and it is a species of frog. We're going to go check it out. Right in here, if I get a bit closer, Rio Grande leopard frog. First herp of the day. Very nice gold colored Rio Grande leopard frog. Alright, so we got fossils already. We got shell right here, shell right here, shell right here, shell right here, all sorts of shells. Beautiful stuff from the Western Interior Seaway, or at least the beginnings of it. All right, phone is dead, but that's what the Nikon is for. So, on a different camera now. Suddenly got much colder. Gorgeous. And onward we move, now wearing open-toed shoes. Michael is wearing boots, but I'm definitely not. There's quite a bit of poison ivy all over here. I've been a camp counselor for years, so uh, I'm going to give you guys a little lesson on poison ivy. This is also poison ivy. That was a few inches from my face. Um, to identify poison ivy, always has three leaves. One, two, three. The leaves on the sides are shaped like mittens, and the one in the middle is a mitten with two thumbs. Um, oftentimes they'll also have a red stem, but that's not a given. That's why I wear pants all the time, if I'm out in the woods, even if it's super hot. Oh yeah, it's all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, and the prints kind of disappear here for whatever reason. Oh wow, those are gorgeous. If I'm not mistaken, this is called Virginia Creeper. That is a beautiful view. Still no herps other than that one leopard frog, hoping to find some snakes. This looks like it could house turtles, but I kind of doubt there's all that many in there. 
we will see what we see. Decent sized orb weaver right here. We've got our second herp in the mouth of a roadrunner back there. Some species of lizard it had. All the modern day dinosaurs are evading our technology. Uh, this black headed vulture just flew right overhead and uh, neither of us had our cameras out, but there he is. Blankard's cricket frog right here. He's not gonna let me pick him up, but I can still get a good shot. Tiny animal, but no less beautiful. I doubt the camera will pick it up, but I can hear some of these calling in the distance. Yeah. Yeah, I hear what you're talking about. This right here, that's a track. See how the rock is pushed up around it? That's what a mud pushed Oh up. yeah, wow. That's a sauropod. All right, guys, we are supposedly approaching the spot of some Acrocanthosaurus prints. Uh, Michael, tell us all about Acrocanthosaurus. Acrocanthosaurus was the most likely candidate to make these tracks. He was a large theropod dinosaur, meaning that he was in the same sort of realm as the Tyrannosaurus, except he is more closely related to an also famous Allosaurus from the American West. He was the sort of all-American dinosaur. He's found all over the place in North America, everywhere from Maryland to Texas to Oklahoma. And there aren't any skeletons found from around here of him, but because of the time period, he is likely the most likely candidate. Wow, that is insane. There's a ring around it, too. And there's also is a this sauropod. a sauropod? Oh, nice. Yeah, sauropod. So, yeah, someone tried to remove this footprint, unfortunately. Someone tried to steal it. But they did not get away with it. We are literally walking in the footsteps of dinosaurs right now. Um, if you see the start back here, they're going to be right here with oh, a wow. left, right, left, strides are a little bit too big for me, right, left here, you can't very oh, see Oh, that's very insane. Well. Right, left, right, left, right, left, and we continue down into the rock. The last one we can see is right here. You'll see it right here. That's you can incredible. see it, how big it is compared to my hand. This isn't as well preserved as the other ones, but you can definitely see it. Massive. It was very much a large animal, nearing upwards of 35 foot or so. Under here, if you peeled up this rock right here, you could probably see it continuing. Incredible. So these right here are the only definite uh, theropod tracks. But right up here, we're gonna get some brontosaurus type animals uh, that we're moving around, possibly in a herd, we're not sure, just given that they could have been made at different times. But there were definitely some long-necked dinosaurs moving up and down this area, probably along the coastline, since this was once a floodplain along the side of what was developing into the Western Interior Seaway, a giant ocean that would eventually cover most of the United States. Paleontology is cool, guys. So that's a sauropod track? Oh, definitely. This may have been, I'm not sure, but this may it's have gigantic. been two feet. So you've got one here, and you've got the front foot here. I'm not entirely sure. It may be just the way the rock acts after eroding. Every single one of these craters is a footfall from a dinosaur, most likely a sauropod like Sauroposeidon. That's incredible. That's absolutely insane. And they continue off this way. Back legs, back legs. Here's a front leg. The front legs are more of a half moon shape. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can see little individual toes there. Right. Whereas the back feet are definitely these craters. Impressive. The front feet, it's very hard to tell on these ones, but so they, they would have had a large uh, front claw. So they almost walked on their knuckles. Almost, yeah. Quite literally walking in the footsteps of dinosaurs. And if that's not incredible, I don't know what is. We've got more tracks. We've Another sword pod. individual here. And a smaller one that was either moving alongside it, behind it, possibly at a completely different time. It's hard to tell. Again, if you flipped over that rock right under there. They would continue on. Definitely. I can't tell which way they were moving now. Sixth set. One, two, three, four, five. These look like two individuals, six, would you say? Seven. I would say that, yes. I would say Is this one right here? This is, is a this very a... well preserved one. This yeah. is 
a right uh, back foot, I believe, and then a right front foot. Right that is a front. massive front foot. Like, that's insane. These are most likely from the same animal. You can very faintly see the outline of where its toes were. One, two, three, four, and then I believe, is that five on the back foot? I believe so, yes. This area, millions and millions of years ago, was a coastline. We are right in the heart of Central Texas, and this used to be the edge of the ocean. It is absolutely beautiful out here. Sun's coming out. So far in here, I've seen a bunch of minnows, some sunfish, some bass, and a little school of catfish. Second Blankard's Cricket Frog right here. Seeing plenty of amphibians, that's a good sign this is a healthy enough ecosystem. This one has very similar coloration to the last one, which makes sense because they do change colors depending on the region they're in, just to blend in with their surroundings. A little bit hard to catch. They're very evasive. My efforts have led him up against my shoe. Hey buddy. There he is. Gorgeous little frog. They may be tiny, but they make up for it in personality. There he goes. We've got a couple mating damselflies over here. We have a fourth frog in this little pool. He's in a little divot right here. There he is. I think that's... no? I thought I felt him. He's inside there. He's bright green. We have our fourth frog. He's been very evasive. Wedged right up in there among the algae. I'm going to see if I can plop my hand down on him. Looks almost like a bullfrog. Juvenile. Alright, we've got him. He is a very young bullfrog. Nice. Oh, boop. There he goes. He's good at that. He's an adorable little guy. I don't think I've found a bullfrog like this in this area before. That may have been fun right there. Yep. Starting to thunder a bit. Good sign for amphibians, not a great sign for us, so we're probably gonna start hiking back. Right, guys, we have our first snake right here. Red striped ribbon snake. Do you see him, Michael? Oh yeah, beautiful. Gorgeous, okay. He sees me, he's smelling. Look at his tongue go, wow. Gorgeous, gorgeous red stripe. All right. Look at that, his tongue looks like a little black-headed snail. Gorgeous animal, wow. I haven't seen one this close before. Was not quite able to catch the uh, ribbon, but that was a gorgeous snake. I'm so glad we saw him. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have a few more. But so far that's three species of frog, one species of snake. I think that's a pretty good haul. We've got another plausible sauropod track over here. Pretty sizable one if so. Got one, two, three, four, five toes in there. And yet another cricket frog. This one's got a different coloration. Same species though. Just as evasive as all the others. These ones are much faster than the bullfrogs. Starting to drizzle out here. We may be caught in a storm. We've just come back out of the woods onto this flat expanse. And you can see, uh, even as we came in, there's a highway right there. This is all just right in the middle of the hill country in central Texas. It's remarkable. Yet another uh, cricket frog right before we leave. This one's a nice orangey tan. That is really pretty. It looks kind of like a creamsicle, like an orange pop color. Don't think he's going to let me grab him. Maybe not. Hi, buddy. There he is. Gorgeous frog. One last find for the road. All right, guys, we have officially made it back. We're headed back up to the highway. I would call that a successful trip, right? I would have to say so as well. At least two different species of dinosaur tracks, uh, one species of snake, three species of amphibian, a lizard, is a dead lizard given that, but, uh, and some crazy birds too. Obviously, yeah, it's crazy stuff. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like or comment. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section down below. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe.